On April 4th, 1999, I arrived home from school. I just graduated. It took a few semesters longer than I originally planned, but I was proud to be done. I had no idea what adult life held for me, but I was optimistic. Alex, dear son of mine, please see if you can muster up the energy to walk into town and pick up some groceries. I've included a list below. Not even home five minutes and she's already barking orders at me. What? The needle of the record player has dropped. Can't you hear the music? It's everywhere. That phone call was surely one of the strangest I've ever received. And no, I couldn't hear the music. A few hundred yards outside of town, I came to a junction. Mulling over the strangeness of being back home, I stopped to notice a forest I'd never explored. It was dark, but somehow attractive. I made a mental note to explore it later, and took a step towards town when I heard a meow near my feet. I pictured what it would be like to be the owner and I imagined describing him to a friend. Lonely? Nah, I don't get too lonely. Besides my mom, there's only a cat. An old cat. But a good friend to talk to. My fictional friend would reply, You talk things over, do you? I nod. Uh-huh. Been together a long time so we can read each other's moods. I understand what makes the cat tick. The cat knows what makes me tick. Of course I didn't know this cat at all. We'd never met. It was a funny looking with a funny rusting face and a Salvador Dali mustache. I couldn't imagine picking out this cat to bring home from a store. I leaned down to pet him, without entirely knowing if cats like to be pet at all. His coarse hair ran through my fingers as he purred. Clearly he liked me. That was a good sign. Alex Eagleston, college graduate, friend of small animals. Hey! Give that back to me!
stepped into the elevator, expecting to find the cat. I scanned the dark floor and found nothing. I sighed as the elevator began to shake, vibrating with motion. The elevator came to a smooth but unexpected stop. I cringed with anxiety as the lights flickered. Please don't die, please don't die. I pleaded with the mechanical gods to keep the power on. My prayers weren't answered. Damn it! 
The power's out. I need to find the stairs or a fuse box.
Uh, hey, who's there? D don't come any closer. I'm armed. Relax and quiet down. It's me, Panda. Panda? Why are you here? I came here to help you. I'm always there for you when you need me. Uh, that's good to hear. What sort of help did you have in mind? My primary use is as a barrier. I can block oncoming enemy attacks and create barriers between you and many other obstacles. My metal shield makes me very heavy, so you can use me to hold down switches and to clear small gaps by stepping on my head. You can press to summon me. Remember to press again to call me back. Also remember that some weighted switches will have reverse effects if you take me off. So, press the summon you and press it again to take you back? I think I get it. I hope so, Alex. It's rather straightforward. However, since you were a liberal arts major, want me to explain this entire thing again? giant eye. <laughs> the pyramid's tears seem to power the room. What the hell is going on here?
Who's there? Dali, is that you? Great, another person. Hey, I can leave if you like. No, please stay. I've been pretty lonely here. Where is here, anyway? I was hoping you'd know. I've been lost down here forever. Did you come through the elevator, too? Elevator? I don't know what that is. Then, uh, where did you come from? I asked, thinking it sounded nicer than, who the hell doesn't know what an elevator is? I came from here. Is there anywhere else? Anyway, I've been looking for my cat, Dali. Have you seen her? So the stupid thing was a girl? I just assumed it was a boy cat, seeing as how it had a spindly mustache. Although, now that I reflected on it, facial hair was not exclusive to male animals or male humans for that matter. Is that the cat who looks like Salvador Dali? <laughs> I don't know who that is. My cat just looks like Dali herself, not another cat named Salvador. She didn't know elevators. I doubted she'd know her 20th century Spanish cattle and surrealist painters all that well either. I said, right, I saw a cat earlier. She had a funny mustache and crazy eyes. Naturally, my description of her beloved feline was offensive to her. Clearly, this was a woman projecting a rather strong personality onto this cat. She took a deep breath and said quickly, My cat has a beautiful mustache and perfect eyes. I can't imagine we're talking about the same cat. I told her I wouldn't mind helping her find her cat. I told her we should move quickly and get out of this dank basement. I waited for a moment as she processed what I said. She was a very difficult girl to read, especially without being able to see her face. I could tell something was wrong. She really projected her opinions and feelings into the room, even without saying them. What's wrong? Uh, I don't have to help, I just thought you could use an extra pair of cat hunting eyes. It's not that. It's okay, forget it. Hey now, that's lame. You can tell me anything, no judgment here. No judgment? Great lie, I like a good liar. Hey, I'm serious. I, I didn't mean anything by that. It's not you. That wasn't fair of me. It's just... The world has used me so unkindly, I fear it's made me suspicious of everyone. Okay. For now, I choose to trust you. But I reserve the right to decide you're just as evil as the rest of the world in the future. Sounds like a fair deal. My name's Alex. Nice to meet you. I'm Sammy, but please call me Sammy. I don't know why I'm trusting you. I guess I always had a special spot for gingers. Hey, careful with that word. That is our word. What do you mean, our word? <laughs> You're weird, Alex. Sorry, lame joke. Let's just look for the cat.
Lee, where have you been? I'm so happy to have you back. Oh, who's a good cat? You are. You are. Oh, I should probably tell you about Dali. Dali is a tool, much like your stuffed panda friend. Use Dali to fetch items and hit switches that are too far away for you to reach. Dali can jump, so don't worry about her falling down any gaps. This will be useful, so make sure you try it. Okay, so shall we get out of here? Sorry about my house. I've been meaning to get someone in here to fix the power, but who has the time for that? I get so busy that little things like that get away from me. But that's normal, isn't it? You get used to the flaws in your own home. It's always confusing for guests. Like my mother used to have everyone take their shoes off in the kitchen. Who does that? Oh no, I've become my mother. Oh, one last thing I should warn you about. I've got a roommate. His name is Wilhelm. Um... Well, you'll see.
healing song.
I am so happy we're almost out of here. This isn't really what I expected to be doing with my day. Well, at least we found Ali. Imagine how much worse it would have been without her. Right. Uh, so, where do you live? I'll walk you back home, or maybe I can borrow my mom's car and drive you if it's outside of Frankton. What do you mean? This is my home. This is where I live. What? You live in this shithole? That's not very nice. I'd never call your house a crap hole because I have manners. Ever heard of them, Alex? Sorry. It's just not every day I meet a girl who lives in an old factory. I don't see it that way. I almost feel as if the factory lives with me. As if the factory, just like Dali, is part of me. The factory is part of you? <laughs> wow, you're almost as dumb as you look. Of course the factory isn't part of me, that's just weird. But do you actually live here? Yeah. Just me and Dali. But usually Dali is better about keeping me company, you know? He's always just running off to God knows where. I reflected on her words. A mysterious girl who lived with her cat in an old steel mill. It was obvious to me that her words didn't contain the entire truth. Something about her compelled me. Pieces of her story started to fit together in my mind. At least that's what I thought at the time. I can admit now that some pieces were pure fabrication on my part. In my head, her story went something like this. Sammy was homeless. A runaway woman who was trying to escape hard times. Someone who had found refuge in her cat. Maybe the only thing left from her previous life. Somehow this felt right inside my head, and still I could tell I was missing something. Her clothes were clean, her breath was fresh, and she was much more energetic than any homeless girl I'd ever known. Not that I've known many. The secret to what I was missing lay in her temper. Is that your hobby? Is what my hobby? Staring off into space and screwing up your face as if to say, what's going on inside my head is really important, so just let me think. Hey, I don't make that fit. two hours when she vanished from my sight. Sammy was gone for good, swept away as if she'd never been there at all. A door into nothing, into a different reality, opened up and swallowed Sammy whole. At that moment, I couldn't think. I couldn't breathe. All I could do was replay the scene of her being pulled into obscurity by nothing. There one second and gone the next. <laughs>